All righty. What's up? How are you doing, Colin? Great. Can you start by talking about with, with Dak not throwing here, just the work you're getting the other quarterbacks and how they've responded this far now, and how you'll do it this weekend as well with those guys. Yeah. Uh, first, it's awesome for those guys. Um, a lot of times, guys in those situations, you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait and you get two reps, you know? And so you wait a long time because obviously Dak's getting the majority of it. So it's awesome for those guys, first and foremost. Um, obviously, we're on ups and downs, training camp. Uh, you know, threw a bunch of picks the other day. That's probably not a great day. But, uh, uh, you know, I think they grew from it. They had a better day yesterday. And uh, so it's been awesome for them. And then ultimately, you know, the big, the big challenge is get a chance to play in these preseason games, and we'll, we'll let it play itself out. What was your internal dialogue? when either Dak told you, my shoulder doesn't feel right, I'm going to not throw today, or when you hear he's going to have an MRI, what's that internal dialogue? Uh, I don't think it's overly concerning. Uh, training camp is part of the process. Guys get banged up during camp. Uh, you know, guys can't go at times. You know, you're leading up to practice, and the guy just, you know, just can't go that day, and we want to go uh, be cautious about those things. And so things are always kind of adjusting, and obviously Dak was a part of that this, uh, right now, and so... Uh, we're just fine. You know, Dak's, Dak's got plenty of time. we got plenty of time to get this thing rolling uh, towards preseason and then to training camp and into the season. And so uh, we're good. How was he doing the first four plus practices before he came out? Really good. Yeah. Dak's Dak. He, he's back. Uh, no concerns. Hindsight is twenty twenty. but is there anything that he was doing or that you're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have him do that in terms of how he ended up getting that shoulder injury? No. No, I, I think we're we're good with the process. You know, sometimes things like this happen, and uh, you're going. You know, when it's still July and we play a game in September, we're going to make sure we're smart about it. In what ways can you see Garrett's understanding of the offense different than last year? Now that he's got more time in the system. Yeah, it's huge. Just to go through a whole off season. Um, yeah, he did a tremendous job in season. I mean, he showed up, and about a week later, he was playing in the game against Pittsburgh, and so uh, you know, he handled that extremely well. Uh, he's just got a great presence about him, great command. Um, he does a great job at the line of scrimmage. And so, uh, you know, you feel very fortunate to have guys like him uh, that, that can handle the volume at the line of scrimmage to be able to do the things that we want to do. It's easier a lot of times to project what someone can do if you've seen them in a lot of NFL games. He hadn't had that. So was there anything beyond that that gave you a, a comfort level saying, hey, if he's, if he's our backup going into the season, we're still in good shape? Yeah, obviously, you know, his opportunity at Pittsburgh and then practice the rest of the year. Obviously, he's, he's out there running the scout team, and so we're around him each and every day. We're in meetings. Garrett's done a tremendous job, done so much uh, for us through this whole process. And uh, Cooper's done the same thing. You know, Ben's done the same thing. And so those guys all just have an awesome opportunity right now to just go play. You were in the quarterback room with Dak as a teammate in his rookie year, and he had quite an adventurous training camp, <laughs> you getting hurt and then Tony. From what you observed about the the way he was as a rookie in the room, is there anything that kind of informed the way you see him now in the room as the leader of the group? He's always been a natural leader. I think it's his the way his mind works. I think until you're in a room talking football, watching football with Dak, you understand just how smart he is and how quickly he can apply uh, coaching points, things we see on film, make those adjustments. I think that's one of his biggest strengths that maybe uh, maybe isn't talked about as much. Uh, I think he does a tremendous job with all that. And obviously, the more and more each and every year, he's taken more and more command at the line of scrimmage of really owning the show. And when you see something, go for it and make adjustments and get us in the right protections, the right concepts if we want to make an adjustment. He's done a tremendous job with all that. Helen, Mike talked after some of the defense's interceptions this week about how the offense had missed assignments and mental errors. During those team drills, what were some of the places y'all most needed to improve, and what was the conversation like in your meetings after those days? Yeah, it's just growth opportunities for everyone. Uh, that's what training camp's for. Uh, you don't want to make the same mistake twice. If we make the same mistake twice, now we got issues. So we're going to go through this process. We're going to have mistakes. We're going to have you know quarterbacks and receivers not on the same page with adjustments to routes, uh, maybe a protection plan. Uh, so we just got to go through the process and. Uh, Great opportunity. Guys kind of got bumped up as soon as Dak wasn't going. Obviously, guys got different reps than maybe they were anticipating, so it was a great great uh, growth opportunity for them. How much is there a day-to-day -day competition between offense and defense during a training camp? Like, who wins what that day and the other, other side wants to come back the next? Yeah, it's natural. It's natural. Everyone's competitive. We'll have certain drills during training camp that are obviously competitive that, you know, offense and defense are going, and there's some sort of a score, scoring element or a score on the clock. Maybe it's a two-minute drive or whatnot. And so naturally, it's competitive. Uh, but at the end of the day, 
we are teammates. You know, everyone's in this together, and so we, we got to do it collaboratively and, and in a smart way. Is C.D. Lamb better than you thought he'd be, or is he doing kind of the stuff you were expecting when you guys drafted him? Yeah, he's been phenomenal. Uh, I don't know where my expectations would have been in relation. At the end of the day, the uh, guy's awesome. And uh, obviously, you guys have seen the growth opportunity that he's had just playing outside, play, playing the outside receiver. We know he can play inside. We've got plenty of film on that. But him being able to play all over the field, he's done a tremendous job with that. And that's going to be a huge, huge asset for us. What was your experience like? You had the Boise stuff a little bit there, too. What was your experience at interviewing with the Eagles? And how do you think that will help you going forward? He told us you do want to be a head coach one day. Yeah, it's good to go through the process. Uh, you're going to go through it. You're going to learn a ton from it. You're going to learn a lot about yourself, uh, go through the process, you know, and, and all the people you get to have conversations with who, who are a part of an interview process who may, uh, may be resources for you. And so I grew a ton from it and, and really, really enjoyed it. Do you actually keep notes after something like that or just file it away mentally what, what you're doing? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You go through that process, you're going to, you're, you're going to learn a lot from it, and you're going to make adjustments, uh, maybe something, you know, your approach, maybe a philosophical thing. Um, I think it's a tremendous opportunity. I really, really enjoyed it. Kellen, I'm, I'm sure it's a good problem to have, but how do you personally go about finding opportunities, reps, what have you, for Tony, knowing that you also have a guy like Z? Yep. He, uh, it's been our been our balancing act for a little while here. Uh, Tony is tremendous. Obviously, he's taken advantage of opportunities when he's had them. And uh, we're continuing to try and find roles where, where we can utilize him. And obviously, right now, we're kind of in this installation process. We, we're getting the foundation of our offense in. As we move into preseason games and get closer to training camp, obviously, we want to find a, a tremendous role for him that can, uh, that can allow him to take advantage of opportunities, even when Zeke's on the field. Is CD getting to a point where you said he's phenomenal as a receiver? Are there discussions about how much we want to use him as a punt returner? Do they ask you, what do you think your role, his role in offense will be, and then do we want to balance that? Yeah, I think I think that's more of you know Bones and, and Mike, you know, deciding when, when he's a part of that process. Obviously, uh, you know, he, he's he's a guy you want the ball in his hands, and so certainly if there's opportunities as a return man, I think uh, our whole entire team will be fired up to see him back there. Amari knows what he's doing in this game. Generally, he's been around a long time. But when you talk about getting everyone on the same page, what's the, the key to keeping a guy like him mentally engaged when he's not going to be out there physically for a little yeah. while? Yeah, uh, really, really, it's meetings. Obviously, him being a part of those being in those each and every day, and then uh, having the opportunity to still be able to watch, watch the team period. So when we are, you know, he's with Britt a lot, obviously getting ready and doing all those aspects to his uh, rehab. But when we get to team, team periods, obviously he's able to watch those. And I think it's, it's, you know, it's the best situation he can possibly be in right now as he recovers. What are Zach Martin's best traits? Uh, holy cow. Uh, <laughs> to me, Zach, leader, tremendous command. Uh, just the toughness, and really, uh, he raises the expectation level. I think of everyone around him. Um, he does a tremendous job, and, and he's not a loud talker. He's not. He's not a big rah rah guy. He's not going to give any big rah rah speeches. But uh, when he talks, when he when he's in the huddle, there's a presence that raises the level for everyone. Past guys have talked about his balance. Just, he, oh yeah. And, and what have you seen him in, in his ability to recover if he's knocked off balance? Does anything kind of come to your mind immediately? A play or a situation? Yeah. I'm trying to remember the game, but uh, certainly there's been some opportunities where uh, you know he, he plays some tremendous talents, and you get in goofy spots as a lineman. Sometimes you get you know torqued, and you're and you're, you're you're literally your back is to the defensive lineman, and uh, he's done some tremendous things on film where uh, he just finds a way to stay in position on guys. And uh, you guys watch it just like all of us. You don't see a whole lot of guys win and continue to win against him. You know they may beat him once, but he usually recovers. He finds a way to kind of fight and claw and. Uh, you know, get get a hand back on the guy and give us just enough time to get the ball out. And uh, you know, it's pretty tremendous for a guy who you know plays snap after snap, plays some you know really challenging guys, especially in our division, uh, in that position. And so uh, he, he's pretty pretty special. How's uh, Michael Gallup? Go ahead, Gallup. Sorry, yeah. how's uh, Michael Gallup grown as a receiver? You've been here since day one with him. Yeah, Michael's uh, done a tremendous job. He's he's you know obviously has so many natural gifts and he's worked his tail off to get there uh, you know he played primarily in kind of one position his first couple of years and i think again just like cd his growth has came and his overall understanding of football just his awareness and being able to line up all over the field and i think that's going to be a tremendous uh you know opportunity for us to take advantage of
For Conor McGovern, this is essentially his first first real off season between the Peck and the rookie and last year's strangeness. Yeah. What parts of his development are most encouraging to you or of his greatest strides been made? I think we know who Connor is as a player. I think it just comes down to consistency, you know, for guy, for guys that you know haven't had as much time on task. It just comes down to consistency, being able to do it each and every down. Connor's obviously did a tremendous job for us last year. You know, once he got comfortable in that position, he had the opportunity to play late in the year. He took huge strides each and every week. Were tremendous strides, and he got to a place where we felt really, really comfortable with him out there. And so uh, we feel fortunate to have Connor Williams, Connor McGovern. You know, both those guys being able to be guys who can play inside and give us a ton of depth. And obviously one of them will start and one of them's ready to hop right back in there anytime we need it. Ellen, when you make the decision for Connor Williams to start taking snaps at center, how much of that is what you see out of him versus feeling that the left guard depth might be better than another position? And what would you say are the most important things he needs to do to master center as opposed to what he's doing at guard? Yeah, first and foremost, uh, He's left guard competition, first and foremost. Uh, it's, he's played tremendous there. He's done a really, really good job. And so first and foremost, is he's, he's battling to be the starting left guard. And uh, I think he provides some depth for us you know, at that center position, not having Joe right now, uh, having Tyler. Tyler's done a tremendous job. Uh, you know, just providing some depth because you never know how rosters rosters play their stuff out as the season. You get tighter rosters, you get in some tricky spots. And so for him to be able to potentially be a, a swing guy that can play center would be really, really big for us. Obviously, playing center in practice and in a game, I feel like, is, is very different. You know, once you get to 22 players out there and the lights are on and, and you got to make decisions fast, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the evaluation process for him probably. But uh, he's done a really good job being able to handle both throughout camp. Thank you. Thank you.